Now, today, now we're going to talk about how to overcome sins or negative thinking, negative emotions. Sasa tunataka kukabiliana na jinsi tuweza kukabiliana na dhambi. Now, many Christians say it's too hard to overcome all the sins. Wa Kristo wengi wanasema kwamba ni vigumu sana kukabiliana na dhambi. They will say I can take care of some sins but other ones I cannot. Wanasema kwamba naweza kukabiliana na hizi na hizi zingine siwezi. And I want to tell you that it's possible. Nataka niwaeleze kwamba yawezekana. We cannot be perfect. Hatuwezi kuwa ma hatuwezi kuwa wakamilifu kabisa. The key to us is that we can stop the sins when the thoughts come in. That's the key. Lakini hii jambo kuu ni kwamba tunaweza kukabiliana na na jambo ama na dhambi. And the reason why many people cannot take care of their sins na sababu kuu ya wao kuwa watu hawezi kukabiliana na dhambi first they don't think like sadness or worry these are sins kwanza hawezi kuweza kufikiria kwamba kama huzuni na kule kuwa na hali ya hofu ni dhambi they think that when i'm ha unhappy is not a sin wanaona kana kwamba kule kutokuwa na furaha si dhambi But any time we are falling short of the glory of God that is sin already. Lakini wakati wote tunapoweza kupungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu hiyo ni dhambi. Now you think of the Christians in heaven. Hebu fikiria kuhusu wakristo walio mbinguni. The Christians in heaven would they be like this? Je, wakristo mbinguni wataweza kuwa tu katika ile hali hafifu hafifu? Oh, I'm an happy. Oh, nitakuwa si takuwa. Would they be like that? Tutakuwa hivyo. So when you look at a Christian on earth and the Christians in heaven, ukiweza kulinganisha wakristo katika ulimwengu na wakristo mbinguni, there are big differences. Kuna tofauti ndio kuu. Because the Christians in heaven are full of joy and love. Kwa sababu wakristo walio mbinguni wamejaa na furaha tele. And the Christians on earth very often will worry and unhappy or get angry. Lakini wakristo walio katika ulimwengu wako na wasiwasi, wana huzuni na hasira. So we need to know what are sins. Leo tunatakana kujua dhambi ni nini. First you can write down number one, what are sins? Unaweza andika chini dhambi ni nini? When we don't have connection with God, when we don't trust in God or we don't have a close relationship with him, that is sin already. Wakati hatuko ama hatuko katika kuunganika na Mungu, huko ndiko kuwa na dhambi. Because some people think, well, I'm a good person, so I have no sin. Kwa hivyo watu wengine wanafikiria kwamba mimi sio mtu mzuri ama mimi mtu mzuri kwa hivyo sina dhambi. But when a good person doesn't have connection with sin is not saved by God, he doesn't have a good relationship with God. Lakini mtu atakao mzuri na hana uhusiano na Mungu, that is already sin. Hiyo tayari ni dhambi. And number two, na jambo la pili, when we don't show the glory of God, wakati hatuonyeshi utukufu wa Mungu. When we don't have the life of God, wakati hatuko na uzima wa Mungu. When we don't have his joy and peace and love, wakati hatuko na furaha na ile uh, upendo, that is sin. Huo ama hiyo ni dhambi. And number three, jambo la tatu, when we break the commandments, we don't love God, we don't love people, that is sin. Wakati hatuhubiri kuhusu uh, ama uh, ile sheria hatuko nazo hiyo ni dhambi and it includes in our nature in our thoughts in our words in our action four areas inayohusisha asili zetu mawazo yetu na hisia zetu masehemu nne so so this three areas first we're not connected to god haya mambo manne kwanza wakati hatuko na uhusiano na mungu second we're not showing the glory of god wakati ambapo hatuonyeshi utukufu wa mungu number three, when we break commandments wakati ambapo kwamba hatufuati eh, ama sheria kuu in our nature in our thoughts in our words in our action katika asili yetu katika hisia zetu katika mawazo yetu na akili zetu now so when many people even when they do ministry watu wengi hata wakati wanapofanya huduma at the same time they obeying god na wakati ule ule pia wana wanamtii wana mungu at the same time we might be sinning too na pia vile vile tunaweza kuwa tunatenda dhambi for instance we might say you're not you're not doing what we should do kwa mfano naweza kuwa nasema kwamba haufanyi kile ambacho tunatakana but we get frustrated tunaweza kushushika when we Give pressure to people. Wakati tunawasindilia wengine na tunawasukuma wengine. When we're not living out the peace of and the love of God. Wakati hatuishi katika upendo na amani ya Mungu, we are already sinning. Wakati huo tunatenda dhambi. Oh, watch tell him how to watch this one this one. You tell him how to do that one. Okay? He's okay. Okay, okay. So tell him tell him how to do it. He understood. Okay, okay. <laughs> now so um 
First we understand what our sins. Kwa hivyo kwanza tunajua kuhusu dhambi zetu. And then we'll watch our life. Na kisha tuangalie maisha yetu. What areas do I have sins? Ni sehemu zipi ambazo nina dhambi? Now the second thing is we need to realize sins are destructive. Na pia tutatakana kujua kwamba dhambi zinaharibu ama dhambi zinaua. Now many people have this concept. Na watu wengi wako na mawazo haya. When I sin I ask God to forgive me. Wakati ninatenda dhambi nauliza kusamehewa. It's taken care of. Ni inashughulikiwa. Now it's true that God will forgive us when we sincerely repent. Ni kweli Mungu anatusamehe wakati tunaomba msamaha kikamilifu. Now if a person commits a sin and then he repents but then he does it again and again. Wakati ambapo mtu anapofanya dhambi na anaweza kuomba msamaha na anarejelea tena kutenda. He might not be having real repentance. Anaweza kuwa hana kule kutubu kwa kweli. And real repentance is say sins are destructive. Na kuweza kusema ni kwamba dhambi zinaua. Sins are worse than uh, garbage. Dhambi ni mbaya sana kuliko takataka. Sins are worse than cancer. Eh dhambi ni mbaya sana kuliko saratani. Because God hates sin. Kwa sababu Mungu anachukia dhambi. He cannot live with sin. Hawezi akaishi na dhambi. Let me ask you Wacha niwaulize. Do you like to sleep in that washroom back there? Una unapenda kulala kwenye cho? No no. If you have, you have no place to sleep, do you want to sleep there? Kama hauna sehemu ya kulala unaweza lala kwa cho? No. The smell. Too hard, right? Ile yeah. harufu ni kali. And the dirt. Na haipendezi. And the insects. Na hata wale wadudu nzi. Let me tell you. The way you hate that washroom to stay there, to live there. Wacha nikwambie jinsi unavyochukia kulala kwenye choo. God hates our sin much more. Mungu anachukia dhambi zetu zaidi. So we realize that sins are very destructive. Kwa hivyo tunatakana tujue kwamba dhambi zinaangamiza. Now I'm going to give you some passages. Nataka niwape sehemu ama vipengele vya Biblia. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 8 and 9. Wa Korinto wa kwanza 10 mstari wa 8 na 9. And then 23,000 were killed because of uh, adultery. Na wanakufa kwa sababu ya ukahaba. And then Acts 5:3 to to 5. Tano, ishirina, uh, tano, tatu. That and Ananias and Sapphira when they lied. Anania na Sapphira walipoweza kudanganya. And then they were killed instantly. Waliwawa papo hapo. That is in the New Testament. Hiyo ni katika agano jipya. God doesn't do it today. Mungu si kwamba haisifanya leo. Not because sins are less serious. Na si kwamba kwa sababu dhambi si kwamba haziko katika hali ambayo ni ya kuonyesha waziwazi ama si kwamba ni jambo waku. When I heard about how many Christians in this country might be committing premarital sex or adultery. Wakati niliposikia kuhusu katika nchi hii kuhusu vijana wadogo ambao wanafanya ngono if god want to punish ikiwa mungu anaweza kuweza kutoa adhabu these people could die instantly in the sexual act watu hao wanaweza tu kuangamia katika tendo hilo ambalo ni la kingono god did not do it is because of his grace to give us chance mungu si kwamba haizi kufanya hivyo lakini ni kwa sababu tu ya neema anatupatia nafasi But according to his holy nature he hates sin. Lakini kwa ajili ya ile asili yake utakatifu anachukia dhambi. And then in uh, Ephesians 4:27, na katika Waefeso 4:27, he says that sin gives the devil a foothold. Nasema kwamba dhambi inampa shetani nafasi. Now what does Satan do? Je, shetani anafanya nini? He comes to Steal to kill and to destroy. Huja kuiba, kuwa na kuharibu. Satan doesn't do anything good. Shetani hafanyi chochote kilichochema. Now sometimes some males, some men, even Christian men, they think, well, this woman is willing to have sex with me. That's a vantage for me. E wanaume wengine ambao ni wa Kristo pia husema kwamba, oh, huyu mwanamke ni mzuri sana wa kufanya naye ngono. And I won't get pregnant. Na hata hawezi kuwa na mimi. I lose nothing. Ya sita sita kwa chochote but has given giving satan a foothold lakini huko ni kumpa shetani nafasi this is water haya ni maji 
Do you want to put 1% poison in there? It's just 1%. Or 0.1% poison. Do you want to drink water with 0.1% poison? Then you need to put So when someone serves God, and at the same time steal people from other churches, he's wasting his effort. I use this illustration again and again. We build on the foundation of Jesus. You build a wall. Do you tear it down next day? When people sin, they are destroying what they are building up. Let me ask you, is ministry easy? Is ministry easy? Is ministry easy? Do you have to work hard to bring people to Jesus? It's not easy, right? You have to put a lot of effort, right? So do you want to build up? And then just tear it down. So then it's sin. Do you want to build up? And then just tear it down. Sin will tear down everything we build up. Dambi zina bomo kila kitu ambacho tunekijenga. And John 5:14. Katika Yohana tano kumi na nne. And Jesus said to the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness. Yesu akasema na uliyali kuwa me ameza kuponywa. And he said, Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Ali mweleza kwamba uende na uache dambi au kitu kikubwa kitendeke kuapo. What are the worst things that will happen? It could be more sickness. It could be possession by demons. It could be his life is ruined. There is no good thing coming from sins. Now many Christians think it's okay to sin. They think it's just a little anger. It's a little sinful thoughts, lustful thoughts. It's a little frustration. It doesn't matter. But actually, it all matters. It can bring destruction. And we have seen a lot of destruction in some people's life. Now have you seen Christians, they, they have problems in their peace, you know, they don't have peace, they don't have joy. They have emotional problems. They have relational problems with people. They might have demons. They might have family problems. They might have job problems. Working problem. They will have problem in serving God. Everything in their life is destroyed. So we realize the destructiveness of sin. Then we have the motivation to change. Okay. Now, um, now the first thing. Now, these are some motivations we want to take care of sins. These are some motivations. Yeah. First motivation. Can you write this down? Motivations. To take care of sins or anything negative in our life. First motivation is God loves me very much. And God is very good. Na mungu ni mzuri. God is very gracious. Na mungu ni wameema. God is a lot of blessings. Na mungu anabaraka nyingi. So first, God is great. God is loving. Kwa hivyo mungu ni mku, mungu ni waupendo. And number two, and number three, my life is precious. Maisha yangu ni adamana. Now if you see someone throws money into the ocean, what will you do? Ukiona mtu anatupa pesa kwenye kwenye bahari, utafanya nini? You say please don't throw it away, give it to me. Utamwambia eh usitupe kwenye bahari, nipe mimi. But many people are not throwing money in the ocean. Lakini watu hawatupi pesa kwenye maji. They are throwing their own life into the ocean. Wanamwaga maisha yao kwenye bahari. 
When I look at people in my, you know, that I know, that their life is destroyed by sins in many ways, I really feel sorry for them. Now, even for myself, I thank God He has given me many good teachings. But if I give in to any sins, and then it, I can destroy my whole ministry. So I don't want to let Satan steal from me. So the second motivation is, our life is precious. I don't want to, Satan to steal it away. And number three, I can do great things for God. I can be a great person. But if I sin, it will destroy my life. Okay, so these three main motivations. And, and number four, sins are destructive. Now, David, when he committed adultery and murder, he was sorry for his sins. And Nathan, passed, uh, Nathan the prophet said to him, God has forgiven your sins. And, and you will not die. But then swords will follow your family. What you did in secret, God will pay you back in public. So I hope we remember these four motivations. First, God is loving. God loves us very much. He treasures us very much. And our life is precious. And I can do great things. I can become a great person. And number four, sins are destructive. Even when we are forgiven, it will still destroy. Now, when we have committed sin, the first thing we do <laughs> is to have real repentance and trust in Jesus for, to forgive. Now, real repentance, God told me, is hating the sin. That we say, a torture is, you know, it's really bad. We think about how we have lustful thoughts. We say, I hate it. I don't like it. Because it destroys my life. It ruins my life. And it makes God unhappy with me. So when we are sorry for our sins, when we can hate sin, then we have the motivation to turn away from sin. For instance, for some people, they have committed adultery. They should hate the adultery. I'm not saying hate the person, but hate the act of adultery. And then he should convince himself his sin is going to destroy his life. He's giving Satan a foothold. And Satan has already entered his life to do destruction. So I hate that sin. And I'm sorry about that sin. Now every time we think about past sins, we should hate the sin, but not continue to have guilt feeling. Now this child, I hope you distinguish this. The distinct. I hope you distinguish these two feelings. Now, now, we need to come on. Let's talk about the fault issue. We go, 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 go,
I hate sin because it's destructive. Na chukia dhambi kwa sababu ina ina haribu. But at the same time, I don't want to be to continue to feel guilty. Na sasa hivyo sitaki kuendelea kusikia kwamba ninashawishika. Because Jesus has promised us, kwa sababu Yesu ametuahidi, when we are sorry for our sins, he will forgive us. Wakati tunahuzunikia dhambi, anatusamehe. That's in 1 John 1:9, katika Waefeso 1:9. And then also Psalm 51:17. Na zaburi mia moja, zaburi amsina moja kumi na saba. That a broken and contrite heart, O Lord, you will not despise. It's broken and contrite heart. Aya na ambia, Dawidi na ambia bana amumbi moyo uliyovunjika. That God really forgives when we are sorry for our sins. Mungu anasamehe wakati tunapo husunikia dami zetu. So we don't continue to be guilty, to feel guilty. But we hate the sin. So every time we think about it, we hate the sin more. And we want to say no to the sin from now on. And you turn away from the sin. Now some Christians, they continue to feel guilty. Oh, I committed that sin. I I committed that sin. Oh, the defender here that is terrible. No, niya niya hatari na ba niya huzuni. God doesn't give me a chance now. Mungu sasa hawezi ni pa na fasi. God doesn't forgive me now. Mungu hawezi ni samehe tena. God doesn't like me now. Mungu hani peni tena. The continual guilt is from Satan. Una unapo endelea katika ile hali ya kuhukumika kuhukumika kule kunatoka kwa shetani. And when we realize our sin we feel sorry that is from the Holy Spirit. Na wakati tunapo elewa dhambi zetu na tunaziweza kuzielewa hizo dhambi inatokana na roho wa Mungu. And then we are sorry for our sins. Na pia tunahuzunikia hizo dhambi. And ask Jesus to forgive us. Na tunamuuliza Yesu atusamehe. He is sure to forgive us. Yeye ni mwenye haki na wa ukweli kutusamehe. Now there's Different degrees of repentance. Kuna hatua tofauti za kutubu. Some of them I say yes, it's bad. Yeah, mtu anaweza sema ndio ni mbaya. And a stronger degree of repentance is saying, a stronger degree of repentance. Na sika ile hali zaidi ya kutubu. Is saying, I have, I offended God. Anasema kwa kweli kwa mba nime muhuzunisha mungu. And God doesn't like it. Na mungu hapedezi. I'm sorry for that sin. Ni na huzuni kia hiyo dami. And I hate that sin. Na ni lai chukia hiyo dami. There is a stronger degree. Ni yoni hali yama ni hali ilio zaidi. And then an even stronger degree is. Na ile zaidi sana sasa. I hate that sin. Ni na chukia hiyo dami. I don't want to have any lust in my heart anymore. Na sitaki kuiona hata tena machoni pamo. I don't want to have any part of the sin. Na sitaki kuhusika katika dami hiyo tena. So when we think about our sins, na wakwa we can have different degrees of hatred for the sin. Tunaweza kuwa na ile asimia ku katika hali ya kutukia dami. Now we can be sorry about the sin too. Kwa hivyo sorry about the sin. Tunaweza kuhusunikia dami. I'm sorry I've committed that sin 10 years ago. Kwa hivyo nina huzunika nimefanya dami miaka kumi ilio pita. It has done destruction to my life. Ime nifanya masaibu meharibu maisha yanku. So I don't want to commit that sin again. Kwa hivyo sitaki kufanya dami hiyo tena. But we don't want to continue to feel guilty. Na hivyo hatutaki kuendelea katika hali ya kukumika. Because Satan is the one who accused the brothers day and night. Kwa sababu shetani ndiye mshitaki wa ndugu zetu usiku na mchana. Satan will continue to say you have no hope. Hey, Shetani atendelea kusema kwa mba hauna tumaini God doesn't forgive you Mungu hakusamehi You are no use Wewe ni mtu asie kwa na maana You have no hope and no future Wewe hauna tumaini na hauna maisha mele All this came from Satan Haya yote ya natoka kwa Shetani So we believe God's forgiveness Kwa hivyo tunamili katika msamaha wa Mungu God gives me new chance and new hope Mungu ananipa na furusa nyingine tena na ananipa tumaini lingine So I don't lose hope now this is very important. I have seen many people live in guilt. Oh, God doesn't like me. Oh, Mungu hani pini. I have no use. Mimi si wamana. I have no hope. Si na tumaini. Now this is not biblical. Okay, we hate sin. 
we hate sin and are sorry for our sins. But we don't continue to feel guilty. We're sure Jesus has forgiven us. Now you can write down this verse. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. That salvation is like a, a, a it's like a rope on us. Salvation. Salvation is like a rope over a body. And his righteousness also is you no know, cover us. So the verse says, I rejoice in the Lord because God has given me salvation like a robe and His righteousness to cover me. So we can rejoice in the salvation and forgiveness of God. Now what does it mean that we're covered with His righteousness? It means, even though we have sins, when Jesus forgives us, we are covered with the righteousness of Jesus. Say it together. Hallelujah. We are covered with the righteousness of Jesus. That means when God looks at us, He sees the righteousness of Jesus on us. Mm -hmm. So He doesn't see our sins. So we, so we thank God for that forgiveness. Now, what is forgiveness? Wash away the sin. And the other is He gives us a righteous robe. So we become holy in the sight of God. So you can say, yes, I'm holy in the sight of God. Now, Revelation, the book of Revelation, also talk about Christians have the righteousness of Christians too. Yeah. We have the righteousness of Jesus on us. And Revelation says the right group on the Christians is also the righteousness of Christians, what we have done for the Lord. So when we are forgiven by Jesus and saved by Jesus, we live out the Christian life and everything we do for God will be our rope in heaven. Now the Bible does talk about that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that we all build on the foundation for some people it's gold and silver. For some people it's hay and stubble. So what we have built, do you want to have gold and silver? Now, for some people say, I'm not perfect. When we're not perfect, we just ask God to forgive us. When we realize our sins, we are sorry and take care of it. Now, I want to say this. Even when we serve God, we are not perfect. For instance, you help someone to believe in Jesus. And he doesn't believe in Jesus. And then we say, I don't like him. In the heart, we say, We don't like him. That is a sin already. Or we say, I want to give up. I cannot bring people to Jesus. 
Losing hope is also a sin. Kukata matumaini pia ni dhambi. Impatience is also a sin. Kukosa ile hali ya kuwa na subira pia ni dhambi. Now when you pay attention to those, wakati unapoweza kushughulikia haya, you notice that we have sins all the time. Na unaweza kujua kwamba tumetenda dhambi wakati wote. You may say, well, what can I do? Na unaweza kuuliza nifanye nini? Now I'm going to tell you now the secret how to overcome sins. Eh, wacha nataka niwaambie siri ya kuweza kushinda I'm not saying we can be perfect. I'm saying as soon as a sinful thought comes up, we can handle it. For instance, we are helping someone to believe in Jesus. And he doesn't want to believe. When we notice we are impatient inside. Wakati tunapotambua kwamba hatuna ile hali ya kuwa na subira. And many people do not pay attention to that. Sometimes we have unhappy feeling. When we see that person, we don't like him. Now, these are all sins. Now, the point is, how can you handle it? You say, oh, I have some impatience. So first we realize we have some impatience. We have some frustration. First, write down this. Five steps to victory. That God has taught me. The first step to victory, the number one, aware. Jambo la kwanza, kuwa mtu wakufahamu. So I'm aware I have impatience. Ninapo jua kwamba nina ile hali ya kutokuwa na subira. I'm aware I have frustration. Nina jua kwamba nina ile hali ya kushushi kamoya. I'm aware I dislike the person. Nina jua kwamba nimeweza kukosa kumpenda ule mtu. Or we are aware we have lust. Au nina ile hali ya kutamani. Or worry. First, we become aware. Now, these teachings you can apply for yourself and also apply in teaching. Number two, destructive. Believe that it's destructive. Believe that the sin is destructive. When I'm impatient with a person, it's destructive. Let me ask you, have you helped your children to learn arithmetic? And then you say, 2 plus 3 is 5. You ask him again later. What is 2 plus 3? It's 7. And you say, I told you already. Why didn't you know? Count your fingers. Now when we have impatience, let me ask you, do you have impatience when you teach your children? When you help your members to love God more, wakati unapowafundisha washirika wako wamjue Mungu sana. So, now when we have the that impatience, wakati tunakuwa na ile hali ya kutokuwa na subira. What does your child see? Yeye mtoto wako anaona nini? Angry father or mother. Yeye anaona baba wa hasira au mama wa hasira. Always frustrated. Wakati wote akiwa ameshushika moyo. Is that a good testimony? No, no. The, the children see that, you know, he's always unhappy. And also your members, do you see, do your members see that you are sometimes frustrated? It's not a good testimony, right? So it is destructive. It can destroy the relationship. It can destroy the church. Okay, so destructiveness. And number three, apply biblical principles. So what does the Bible say? So what does the Bible say we should do? That's the point. The Bible says be patient. 
The patient, the the Bible says, accept people with how they are. You know, when they are sinners, accept them. And the Bible says, overcome wickedness with goodness. Yes. Okay, so this apply biblical principles. So. Number four. Pray. Omba. To get strength. Upate nguvu. Number five. I choose to obey. Choose to obey. Now, I'll use this illustration now. When we are helping someone to love God, or we are helping someone to understand the Bible, you say it one time, he doesn't understand. We say it a second time, he doesn't understand. And our face show a little unhappiness. Yeah, How come you don't learn? And then we notice we have some frustration. So first is aware, aware. And then I know it's destructive. No, Because it can hurt the person and also God doesn't like my ministry because I get frustrated easily and then I apply the biblical principle be patient but I have no strength so number four, pray to God. Amen. And then I tell myself, I can be patient. It's okay, you haven't learned it so fast. Take your time. I was like that too in the past. And uh, you have tried already. Yeah, I see that you are trying. No, no, So we choose to obey. Yeah, But some people don't like to choose to obey. He's so slow. Yeah, yeah, now I'm going to punish him. Show him some anger. So in our heart we say, it is not fair. So but when we understand, when we are frustrated, it's going to destroy our life, our ministry. Now, use an, another illustration. For many men, if they see a beautiful, sexy lady, wow, so sexy, you haven't seen anyone like that. Your eyes attracted. <laughs> and then the heart follows. The heart follows. And, and the person wants to look at that woman. And have thoughts. And then we realize we have become aware we have this lust. Number two is destructive. It will make me feel guilty. It will affect my relationship with God. And also, if we have lust built up in our life, Whenever we see any sexy, beautiful lady in a congregation, we will be affected. And our whole ministry, when we build up, and God says there's a lot of lust in your ministry. Now, even when we pray for ladies, well, she's very beautiful. I want to touch her. And now I, and now I have a chance to touch her. <laughs> now if we have lust there, how would God feel about it? Yeah. So we need to realize this is destructive. I want to honor this person as a person. 
I don't want to look at this person as a sexy beautiful lady. Yeah. So I apply biblical principle. To take care of all lust and adultery. I should respect my wife. And not be attracted by other women. And not be attracted by other women. And I will pray. And we choose. First, sometimes we don't look at a lady anymore. And take care of this lust in our heart. If we still keep thinking, we convince ourselves this is destructive. My life will be destroyed. So I want to praise God. God give me strength. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. So we, we can handle it. Now, God has shown me this secret. Mungu amenionyesha siri hii. Very simple. Ye ambaye ni rahisi sana. Stop it while it's still in our mind. Uweza kuweza kuzuia wakati ngali katika mawazo yetu.